Holy Spirit, just have your way with this service today. May all that here be blessed by the words that you have given me to speak today, Father. Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' precious and holy name. on the roof I was do, I was I was doing some ch uh, we put some doors in the shop and I had to uh, move some electrical and I was trying to get this piece of flex into this box on the wall well they'd stacked the insulation and the plywood against the wall and from my little step stool I couldn't quite get it in there so I grab a hold of the conduit and I step up on top of this little ledge of plywood and insulation and snap my wire in and as I'm stepping back onto my step stool the step stool left yeah and I fell down about that far and I fell out about eight feet from the wall and I landed on a two before right across here. I got a big old nice purple and green and yellow bruise here, and I messed up my left ankle or left knee. I don't know how I did that. I was on this side. I don't know how I hit the inside of this knee. I don't know, but anyway, I did. But all's better. Shortcut. Yeah, shortcut. <laughs> all is better. I'm feeling better. Still sore. It takes me a little while to get my knee limbered up in the morning because it gets real stiff at night. But it's getting better. Uh, I have a question. Are we going to have a dinner in January? We need to. That's up to you, ladies. That's you's responsibility. Well, We've been kind of well. Let's see. We had one. We had one the first of the month. That's after Thanksgiving when we put the tree up. <laughs> no turkey. No turkey. What's the deal? some good cooks in here <laughs> and I'll bet you're a good cook too <laughs> that sounds good <laughs> Getting hungry. How come? Communion's that day too. Communion. Don't do that. Communion. I know where you live. Again. Let's go. See, I get no respect. I'm kind of like Rodney Dangerfield. I just don't get no respect around here. Uh. I'm thinking about doing something the first of the year that I don't normally do. No, I'm working on a series. We haven't, I haven't done, I did one on healing one time a little bit, but I'm thinking about doing one on the God of the supernatural. We 
we serve a supernatural God. And the birth of Jesus is just one of those supernatural things that he did. Number one, a virgin had a baby. Now, in my books, that's supernatural. Matthew chapter 1. And starting with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make a public example or public spectacle, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things... Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the pro- spoken by the Lord through the prophets saying behold a virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they will call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us Isaiah the prophet prophesied that a virgin would give birth to the Messiah some 500 years before it actually happened God of the supernatural. What God has said back here in the Old Testament that we don't get much into anymore, He will do. Because the Word tells us that He never changes. And what He says, He will do. And supernatural stuff, you know, the kids today are looking for something. There's, there, they know there's something more than what they're seeing on the streets. And they're looking. They're hungry. And if the church doesn't give them what they're looking for, they're going to find it out there on the street. And what they find out there is going to be supernatural junk. It's not going to be the supernatural love of the Lord God Almighty. The devil has a counterfeit for everything that God has. And he, trust me, is willing to jump in if you aren't. He is willing to lead our children astray. He is willing to deceive even the elect if it goes that far. People have to understand that there is a force out there that is looking to destroy your families to destroy your kids, to destroy your livelihood. And his name is Satan, Beelzebub, the devil. And we have to come against him. We have to stand up. But God, the super, four or five hundred years before, said that someday there's going to be a virgin give birth to a child. And he will save His people from their sins. His name was Jesus Christ. There's over 2,000 prophecies about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And every single one of them came to pass about His birth. Not one of them was left out. Not one of them was wrong. Every single one of them came came to pass. Isaiah prophesied the virgin birth in Isaiah 7, verse 14. Luke chapter 2. This is just this is Luke's account of. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this is just the account that Luke wrote of the birth of Jesus and his announcement of his birth. And the angel, in verse 30, said, And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb 
and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. That's just another version of what... That is... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I wrote down verse, chapter 2 here, and I meant verse 1, or chapter 1 and verse 30. Yeah, I don't know what I, I don't know what I, I, I messed that one up. Yeah, the name, two verses, eight through twenty is what I was actually wanting to do. But and also, you know, in in Matthew chapter two and verse six, it talks about uh, the wise men. And we've always said the three wise men. You know, it says absolutely nothing in the Bible about three wise men. It says, wise men came from the east. We have tacked the number three on there because they brought three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But it says nothing in here about three. Chapter two, uh, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. Now, actually back on up uh, to, to verse 1. And now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. It doesn't say three wise men. It just says wise men came from the east. We have always assumed because they brought three gifts, there was three. And that may be true. But it's not what it says in the Word. <laughs> and we all know that this Word is true, right? But in verse 6, he says, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Ju Judea? For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd his, my people Israel. And that was prophesied by Micah over 400 years before the birth of Christ. And we know it was over 400 years because there's 400 years between the last book of the Old Testament and Matthew. So over 400 years, God prophesied that the, Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Now comes the fun part. Joseph and Mary didn't live in Bethlehem. They lived in Nazareth. That's why Jesus is called the Nazarene. They lived in Nazareth. And back then, people just didn't travel from one town to the other for the fun of it, like we do today. So there had to be a reason for them to go to Bethlehem. And the reason was that the... the Romans had conquered Israel and Caesar had declared that all the world should be taxed. So everyone had to go to their hometown to register. To, county. to the county seat <laughs> to register. There you go. <laughs> So, to get Joseph, who was from David's lineage, and when you chase the genealogy of Jesus, it comes down to Joseph as being from the line of David. David was from Bethlehem. So, any of his relatives had to go to Bethlehem to pay their taxes and get registered. Well, it just so happened that Mary was about to give birth when they had to go to Bethlehem. Coincidence? I don't think so. God planned it out. 
God prophesied it in the Old Testament that Jesus would be born, the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, and no matter what it took, his parents were going to be in Bethlehem when it come time for him to come. Amen? God don't make mistakes. And if any of you kids are ever told by anybody that you're a mistake, they're a liar right out of the pit of hell because God don't make mistakes. And before you were ever consumed in your mother's womb, God knew who you were. You are a special person in Jesus Christ. And God knew that before you were ever conceived in your mother's womb not before you were born before you were ever a twinkle in your daddy's eye God knew who you were and he loves you enough that he sent his son to die on the cross of Calvary to save you from your sins God loves you he loved me that much and trust me I wasn't that good a kid you can ask the lady in the red and white shirt. <laughs> she referred to me one time as a snot-nosed, cocky little punk. <laughs> Selma. I, I ain't denying it. I know what I was. <coughs> and if God can save me, trust me, he can save anybody. And you know what? If I'd have been the only one that needed it, he would have still sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. He sent him to die on the cross for you. Amen. King of King and Lord of Lords, we know that's what Jesus was. But he came and was born in a cave in a manger. He was king. He was the king of the prince of heaven. And he was born in a stable. And the first ones to come and celebrate his birth was a bunch of shepherds. The lowest people on the earth at the time were shepherds. Because you worked for the dude that was in the big house out in the field when it was cold watching over the sheep. Another little neat thing about that. When the angels appeared to the shepherd in the fields outside of, Jer outside of Bethlehem that night to announce Jesus' birth, you know it was the same field where Boaz and Ruth met when she was gleaning wheat in the field outside Jerusalem that was owned by Boaz. Boaz was David's great-granddad. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Ruth was his great-grandmother. You want me to prove it? Huh? Don't have to prove it? You're not supposed to take anything I say for granted. You try everything I say against this word. <coughs> and if it don't line up against this word, what I say is a lie. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot David. Ruth and Boaz were David's great-grandparents. Another little neat tidbit. Ruth wasn't a Jew. She was a Moabite priestess. She was an idol worshiper who came to Jerusalem or came to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law when her mother-in-law's husband and kids died. They came back to Israel to live, and Ruth came with her. You know, there's only two women listed in the genealogy of Jesus, and neither one of them are Jews. Anybody want to guess who the first one was? 
We've talked about it before. Rahab the harlot from Jericho. Because God saved, because she protected the spies that they sent in to Jericho to spy out the town, God saved her and her family, and she ended up marrying a Jewish guy that was in the, in the group and became part of the lineage of Jesus. So guess what? We all got grafted in to the kingdom of God way before Jesus died on the cross. The God of the supernatural. We serve a supernatural God. And the stuff that Jesus done when he was here, raised the dead, healed the sick, blind eyes were opened, deaf tongues were loosed, deaf or mute tongues were loosed, deaf ears hear. That God is the same God today. And I know we're going to start seeing the supernatural move of God. And I think we're going to start seeing it this coming year. Things are lining up to get pretty rough. We've got under $2 gas, which is nice. I'm not complaining about that. But we got fifty dollar oil. We got fifty dollar oil, and most independent oil companies are losing money at under eighty five dollars a barrel. I've been through two oil field, one crash. I I worked through the Penn Square crash of the nineteen eighties. And I've been through a couple slowdowns since then. But that crash in 1982 was bad. There were hundreds of thousands of men and women got laid off in the oil field. And trust me, $50 oil ain't good. It's not good for the country. It's not good for our local economy because the local economy, the state of Oklahoma runs on oil money. Texas too. Yeah. And if what this guy said about seven, six, five years ago pans out, we're in trouble. I'm not scared. Because oil is not my source. God is my source. And God will take care of us. I'm concerned, yes, but I'm not scared. Because what happens in Washington doesn't scare me. It concerns me, but it doesn't scare me. But I had a, I had a man tell me about five years ago that you watch when the 2016 election time comes around. that election probably will not happen. Because he is trying to devise a plan to where he can be locked in as leader of this country. There's only a couple ways that can happen constitutionally, but we know that constitutionally he don't care. Because he's, he's proven that he doesn't follow the Constitution anyway. One is if we are in a declared war. And I would not be surprised if we do not wind up declaring war against Iran and ISIS and all of that going on over in the Middle East. That would be one way. Another way is a catastrophic crash of our financial system like we've seen in the 1920s. And if this don't turn around soon, we're, we're headed that way. But we still serve a supernatural God that can get us through and will protect us. And that's what we're going to be talking about. But the supernatural move of God.
when all else has fallen, like it says in Psalm 91, a thousand may fall at my right hand, ten thousand, or at one hand, and ten thousand may fall at my right but it will not come near me and it will not come near us. It will not come near this dwelling. God will protect us and he will get us through. Supernaturally get us through. And we will see people coming and saying, what is going on? How can you keep such an upbeat, happy tone in your life when everything is going to hell all around you. It's because I serve a supernatural, miracle-working, loving God who cares about his kids, who cares about his family, and will protect them. David talks about in the Psalms, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. We will not be forsaken if we stay the course and we trust in God. Amen? Want just one of the supernatural things that God did in this book is the birth of His Son, Jesus Christ. There is absolutely no physical, logical explanation for that to happen except it was a supernatural move of the Father. And we are going to see many, many more supernatural moves of the Holy Spirit in the near future. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for this word. Father, I thank you for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The miracle, the miracles that you had to work to make this all fit the way you had prophesied that it would fit. The things that had to happen. Joseph and Mary happened to go to Jerusalem. The angels coming and announcing the king's birth who was born in a stable. The, the miraculous conception of Jesus and the supernatural move of the Holy Spirit.